Hey guys, welcome back to Coding Flamingo. Today we're going to look at ca calling APIs from our Azure functions. So Azure functions are basically um, kind of like serverless functions that you can run. So it can be some code to pick up something from somewhere and push it somewhere else, or it can be used inside a logic app. Uh, in this case, we're going to use it in, in this fake scenario. It's just going to be to call our admin APIs. In this case, our admin APIs is just going to be a regular, basically the regular uh, .NET Core application, the weather forecast that calls the API and gives you the weather forecast. Uh, obviously, in your code, you'll use something else. Um, so yeah, let's get started with it. So first, we have to create our HTTP service. So let's start creating the folder. It HTTP request server. So in here, um, let's make the class public, and let's start with the constructor. I'm just going to copy and paste it, and I'll go through it. There's going to be some dependencies that we're going to have to add. Um, the first logger, this is the logging, uh, by default Azure will use Azure um, App Insights, which then you can use to set up alerts and everything, it's very cool. Um, here I'm setting the dependencies, I'm installing the app authentication that we have used in the past, this one will use either an MSI or your Visual Studio identity. Um, so I'm just installing that one, we're, and we're going to have to install Poly as well. So Poly lets you do the, uh, it, it creates a retry policy for HTTP calls. So basically, as you can see here, uh, I'm creating an array of statuses that I would want uh, to retry. And when I create the policy in poly, um, I'm just adding all the dependencies. When I create the policy, I, I tell it that uh, that if any of these errors, and you can set it up to whatever you want. This one's I want to check if there's a gateway error, bad gateway, um, gateway, sorry. Um, service and available or internal service error like I just want to retry three times and I give it a little time to recover in case it's an error like a transient error so first I do two then four and then eight seconds uh, that's um, basically what they recommend just keep going exponentially uh, to give it more time for the service to um, to come back uh, and you can always like so, like, here's information of the whole product, and it tells you how to use it, and it has a lot of cool features, so you should definitely check it, check it out. Um, so, yeah, this basically will create the retries um, for our service, and this one we just did it that is three times, and if not, we'll just send an error. So that's a constructor. So then we're going to do the call API. The call API is very similar to what we did in uh, the crypto trading video. Uh, so I'm just going to copy and paste it. So I pass a URL. In this one, I return a bold because I just want to know if it was successful or not. If we were really getting information, you would return whatever structure you would want. So in this one, I pass a URL and an auth URL. If I don't pass any auth URL, uh, we'll see later in the other functions, I just don't add any token to it. Um, then we do our input validation. The auth URL input validation, we do it in the actual token stuff. So if it's empty, we actually don't really care because we'll take care of it later. Um, here we're setting the validation for the server. And then we do it in a, we're going to have our response string, what it returns. 
and whether or not it was successful. So in here, we're doing the retry policy that we created before. We say execute async, and now I have to create a function called create message and send async. This one, um, I just kind of came up with a name. It doesn't have to be called like that, and I pass a URL and off URL. Um, and then I, re I get the response and I check whether or not it's successful. If it's successful, we just um, return, uh, sorry, we log the information that was successful and if not, we uh, log the error. And then we return whether or not uh, it was successful and if we catch any exceptions um, that are not caught by the retry policy, then we log the error and return false. And with App Insights, you can set up alerts and everything for those types of errors. So now let's create this function. And so and so in here we're uh, in here we're creating the the message and sending it, which will use the token authentication. We have done this uh, in the past, I believe. So this one, I'm just using the app authentication, the same we use for MSI authentication for our database in our SQL and Blazor video. Um, and this one, I'm just getting the token and returning it. And it's, if, as you can see here, I only pass it if the auth URL has a URL. If not, we do it without authentication. Um, and here I just created the message and sent the message, which is just a get. Um, in this one, we're not passing any parameters or anything. It's just a URL. Obviously, as more complex your system gets, if you're passing um, parameters or if it's a post or something, you would have to change this function. But in this case, we're just going to keep it as simple as possible. The whole point of this video is kind of to see poly in use and see Azure functions in use. So we're just keeping it as simple as possible. So now we're going to um, go to the main program. So um, if we go to startup, sorry, I'm going to my reference. So first I'm going to change the timer. This is every five minutes. We're going to change it to every five seconds just for testing. Um, if you Google like the functions, sorry, I have a message. Um, the timer for functions, it gives you like all the information of the different things you can do and you can look into it or how you want to set it up. In this case, we're going to do it every five seconds just for testing to make it quick and then we're gonna get the auth URL and the URL string from um, from our get environment from our environments and we're gonna create the logger so I'll just um, so as I said, we're getting this from our environments. In here, it will be from locals.json, local settings of JSON. In Azure, you'll actually set it up, um, but we'll do that in the next video. Um, and now it's complaining that we're calling an async um, call from a static uh, from a void function. So the easiest way I always like just letting them make it async because it actually changed the number to make it proper to run async. And I like moving this to using and I copy it wrong. So we get the URLs and we call it. So now we just have to get the URLs. Um, so in this one, I already have them here, but I'll show you how to get them. And here I'm going to be calling my local host. So it's going to be this one. That is where I'm hosting the site. 
and then this one it was created when I created the the website so I'm gonna go to my Azure portal and show you where to get the so this is the so I'm gonna start from the beginning go to Active Directory App Registrations and <coughs> name for it is functions test um, and then the, this is the URL that you will use for authenticating for it so that's the one that I copied into here so let's run it right now and let's see what happens so first this pretty cool ASCII art I just like every time I see it so now it's initializing and run the trigger we're getting an error. So if we look and see what the error is, it's saying that Visual Studio is not allowed to get a token because it's so it's trying to use my um, my ID as sorry my, my user ID uh, to get the token, but it, it, so technically it's using user impersonation. So let's just copy the the ID. Hopefully that copy it. And we're gonna go back to Azure and give Visual Studio access to um, give access to to do this. So first, we're gonna add. So this is back in our app in our application, the functions test staff. And we're gonna add a client ID. So this is the Visual Studio client ID, and we're gonna give it user impersonation um, permits permissions and this is in the expose API so now that we added it we should be able to run it again so now we were able to get the token so now let's continue and remove this breakpoint and now we can see they return successful. Um, so it actually went and got the API. I'm gonna put a breakpoint here just to verify. So yeah, as you can see here, it's gonna go get the response. Ah, that's what it did. And we get a 200, so then we return successful up here. And that ends this function and this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.